Welcome to Keystone Coating. Here at Keystone Coating, we have a long history. Our roots take us back to the agricultural industry beginning in 1947 when we manufactured and wet painted our equipment. Fast forward to 1986, we said goodbye to liquid paint and we began powder coating and Keystone Coating was born. While we still powder coat agricultural components, we are so much more than that. From indoor and outdoor furniture, agricultural products, air conditioning components, light poles, we powder coat for all types of companies in all types of industries. We have three high volume powder production lines that are located here in central Pennsylvania. Now that you know a little bit about who we are, let me show you around. Before your project begins, we will work with you to learn about your product and any special coating instructions you may have. You are then given a dedicated inside salesperson who will create a custom quote for you. Once approved, they will create an instruction sheet for each part called a job traveler. The job traveler ensures that our team members on the shop floor knows exactly what you are expecting. When your product arrives at Keystone Coating, it is given a general inspection for any shipping damage and parts are counted to ensure accuracy. It's at this point the job travelers are printed and placed with the parts. If your product has any type of corrosion, laser scale, mill scale, or weld smut, these will need to be removed by blasting prior to coating. Otherwise, the powder coating will chip off. We blast with either steel grit or aluminum oxide, depending on the size and substrate of your part. If your product contains areas that must remain unfinished, such as machined areas, threaded holes, or threaded studs, we will mask them off to ensure that they are not powder coated. At this point, your parts are ready to start their three to four hour journey through our powder coating process. Here at Keystone Coating, we have three high volume production lines. This is our original production line that have 20 feet load bars and can hold a thousand pounds. Our second production line, the load bars are six feet long and can hold 300 pounds. Our third production line has 16 foot load bars and can hold 800 pounds. Once your product is on the line, the first step is to go through our state-of-the-art eight-stage pre-treatment system. This does much more than clean the metal. This actually chemically etches and prepares the metal for powder coating. This will allow for a much stronger bond between the metal and the powder coating. Our testing shows that this pre-treatment system will actually outperform blasting by over 50%. This is a workhorse of our system. This allows us to meet the most rigorous of standards in the powder coating industry, including the AMA 2605 standard. As soon as parts come out of the pretreatment system, they must all go through our dry off oven. This is actually a very crucial step. Moisture is a mortal enemy of powder coating. If there's moisture left on a part, or even so much as a small pinhole in a weld joint, it can become problematic. If there's moisture in that pinhole, it would actually reach boiling point while going through our cure oven and would actually spew out over your powder coating and ruin it. And we'd be back at square one, starting over with your part. If your product is being used outside, we highly recommend the use of a primer. For steel products, we have a zinc-rich primer. And for aluminum products, we have a non-zinc primer. For the zinc-rich primer, it's similar in nature to galvanizing a part. When you galvanize a part, you actually dip the whole part into molten zinc. Here in powder coating, we actually spray the uh, primer on in a powder form. This can actually extend the life of your product by up to four times. After the parts come out of the primer cure oven, they've then moved to the front part, applying the top coat. This is where we can apply all types of powders, from standard RAL colors to custom produced powders, super durable powders in all types of formulations. 
urethanes, epoxies, polyesters, and all types of hybrids. We spray them all with all types of textures. The powder is actually held in this hopper right here. This hopper has air actually being pumped up from the bottom, which gives it a liquid appearance, which is also technically called fluidizing. This allows the spray guns to be able to pick up that powder very nicely, and the spray guns actually put a, put a positive charge to the powder. That positive charge is actually attracted to the parts that are hanging on the grounded line, and the powder is held on there until it's baked. So we have the ability to spray with both manual spray guns as well as automatic spray guns, and we use them depending on what the profile of the part actually is. As the parts come out of the top coat booth, they then move into the cure oven. Time and temperature in the oven varies depending on what powder we are spraying as well as what part we are spraying. Every powder comes with a recipe. It may say 350 degrees for 15 minutes or 400 degrees for 20 minutes. If you were baking cookies, that's what you would do. You would follow the recipe. In powder coating, it's a little different. We need to make sure that this metal reaches the specified temperature for the specified length of time. So if you're coating a thin sheet metal, it moves through the process very quickly. If we're coating a heavy cast iron part, it slows down the process. So our temperature and our line speed are constantly being adjusted to make sure that our powder is fully cured. We are getting close to the end of the process, but we still have a very important stage to complete. This is our quality assurance area. We do several operations here to make sure that you receive your parts as expected. We count the parts coming out of the oven. We have a test panel at the beginning of each color that allows us to do a destructive test to ensure adhesion. We will visually inspect the parts to make sure that they look great, and we will make sure that the powder is 100% cured. To do this, we will apply a chemical called methyl ethyl ketone to a cotton swab. We then do approximately 50 double rubs to the part. If the powder is cured properly, there should be little to no transfer of color on the swab. If there is, that indicates that the powder is not completely cured. If that's the case, we simply back the parts into the oven for the final cure. Quality assurance is far more than inspecting product as it comes off the line. One of our strengths here at Keystone Coating is that we continually test and monitor our processes. One of the ways we do this is with our cyclic corrosion chamber. It is similar to a salt fog cabinet and uses some of the same technology, but is truer to life and more accelerated. We have an individual on staff whose sole responsibility is to run our in-house laboratory and is dedicated to ensuring that our pretreatment system is operating properly. One of the often overlooked but very important details in our industry is determining how the final product is to be packaged. Specific packaging requirements will be on the job traveler. Whether it is bulk packaged in a Gaylord or custom packaging, we are happy to work with you to find the best solution. As you can see, we are here and ready to serve you with our long history in the powder coating industry and our ability to reach the most stringent of standards, the AMA 2605 status. We have the ability to serve you well. Please contact us at keystonecoating.com. You even can upload your blueprints directly on the website. Please reach out to us and we would be glad to learn how we can serve you best.